What are evolutionarily stable strategies? In many cases, it's kind of clear what's the best thing for an individual to do, the best thing it can do to increase its survival and reproduction. But there are times when what's the best thing to do depends upon what other individuals in the population are doing, what in particular the majority of individuals in the population are doing. A hypothetical example we could call fishers and pirates. And I'm talking now about some kind of birds where there are two ways of getting fish. These are seabirds. Either you can fish for fish, you either dive into the sea and catch fish, or you hang about waiting for a bird that's caught a fish and steal it. Those are pirates. And these are two ways of making a living. Now, what's the best thing to be, a fisher or a pirate? And the answer is that it's not obvious because it depends what the rest of the population are doing. Uh, if the whole population is fishing, then it could very well be that an individual could mutate and become a pirate because there are plenty of fishing going on and it's easy to steal a fish. So then you might say, well, a natural selection then favours piracy, the, the gene for being a pirate spreads through the population. In a few generations, now everybody's a pirate and there's no fish. So piracy is not stable. It's an unstable, it's evolutionarily unstable. Fishing might also be unstable because if the whole population is fishing, then a mutant pirate in invades. So a, a stable strategy is a strategy such that when all the population are doing it, no mutant individual could arise which would do better. So neither fisher nor pirate in my hypothetical sort of game is, is evolutionarily stable. What might be evolutionarily stable is some kind of ratio. It might be 80% fishers and 20% pirates, something of that sort. And the definition of stability in this case is when they're doing equally well. A well-known example is the sex ratio, where any departure from the stable sex ratio is, uh, is penalised by natural selection. If there are too many males, an individual is better off having daughters, and if there are too many females in, in the population, an individual is better off having sons. And so the, the stable ratio is 50-50, or strictly speaking, it's 50% investment, economic investment in sons and economic investment in, in daughters. So an, an evolutionarily stable strategy is a strategy which um, cannot be bettered by any, any other strategy provided that ev everybody else in the population is, is doing it. You know, two years ago when this channel reached half a million subscribers, you guys asked me who would I like to meet? And I answered, Bill Nye, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Richard Dawkins. And since then, Bill Nye has taught me how to tie a bow tie. I got to interview Richard Dawkins. And on August 22nd and 23rd, I will be hosting Neil deGrasse Tyson in Sydney and Canberra. Link in the description. And I really want to thank you guys because I think it is your support that has made this all happen. You know, this video was animated by the Lyosax, who is a viewer but also runs his own channel, so you should check it out if you like those animations. Plus, Audible.com has been the long-term sponsor of this channel, and what I love is that they're sharing information just like I like to. You know, this week it makes sense to share a Richard Dawkins book. My favorite is The Selfish Gene, because it's not about a gene for selfishness, it's about how genes themselves behave in selfish ways. And sometimes that means the organism that contains those genes behaves in strange ways, ways you might not imagine. And that was a real consciousness raiser for me. So you should definitely check out this book if you haven't read it already. You can actually download it for free, read by Richard Dawkins, by going to audible.com slash veritasium, or you can pick any other book of your choosing for a one month free trial. Audible is an awesome audiobook website with over hundreds of thousands of titles in all areas of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. So really, you should check them out if you're at all into audiobooks. Most of all, I want to say thank you to you for making it possible for me to meet my idols.